Howdy gang, Trailblazer Tim here. Today I'm going to take a few minutes and share with you some of the tips and tricks of how to get the very most out of your RV travel trailer. I actually own a 2012 Dutchman Kodiak 24 foot travel trailer and over the past few months I've had the opportunity to go through it and find out things that work and don't work and this is what this video is about. doesn't matter if you have an RV uh, or a fifth wheel travel trailer or coach or anything for the most part unless it's something that's custom most of these things are set up quite alike okay tip number one we're outside in the utility section of the uh, travel trailer RV and the first thing you're going to want to do especially if you put your RV up in storage or something like that is protect the vents <clears throat> where your water heater and your furnace as well as your refrigerator and stuff are by doing so Pick up these little screens that protect from these flying insects such as mud daubers and bees and stuff. That's the water heater. Right there is furnace. See that? You're going to have to take measurements on these because they make different sizes. If you look very closely up inside of there, I also have screens that are covering up the exhaust from the refrigerator. Now mud daubers and all kinds of little insects and critters and bees and stuff can get up in there form nests. And you're going to open it one day and you're going to have a bunch of little critters in there or they're going to start blocking little critical areas up inside of the utility area which is going to cause problems down the road for you. So make sure to pick some of these up either at your local RV supply or you can find them online. Next tip. Everybody needs to have a spare set of keys when it comes to having an RV or a travel trailer or motor coach. So get yourself a spare set made at your locksmith and find somewhere on the outside it doesn't matter where where you can stow those extra keys just in case you were out for the day you lost them you went swimming you left them in your pocket now they're lost in the ocean and especially if you're living in one of these things you ain't gonna want to have to come back and break the door down in this case check it out I got my little battery box here and what I've done is I've actually stored my keys spare set on a set of zip ties down underneath here, you can see there's a razor blade, which I can cut that. Now I can get back into my RV. And once I get in there, I'm gonna have another spare set made. That way it doesn't happen to me again. Smart thinking. Next tip I wanna share with everybody. Everything on an RV at one point in time, if it moves, it needs to be lubricated. A lot of people are like, ah, just use WD-40. No, because it's gonna gum things up. Especially if you have your RV or your travel trailer sitting inside of a storage and you come back and put your key in here to unlock your little storage container that's underneath and that handle won't move because it's plastic and it dries up inside of there. That's why it's very important every few months go ahead and get yourself some silicone lube. Silicone. You can get this at Walmart. It's very cheap. I'm going to show you how this works. Now if you take a look, I have my underneath compartment or a lot of people call it the basement and stuff and you got your little flip door and you got your little latch here that holds that in place well this is the actual latch right there that opens this is very important every few months go ahead and take some of your silicone lube and spray it down the side of there let's see if i can do this it's tough one-handed that get it down in there once you have that lube in there Go ahead and just exercise it in there the way it's supposed to. Do that on every single one of your latches. Anything that moves inside your RV, your door hinges, doesn't matter what it is, everything is going to need to be lubed and kept lubed. If not, and you walk away for six months, come back, you're going to have a heck of a time trying to open up these little doors. Now we're on that subject with these doors, and all these little RVs and travel trailers have them. You never want to slam things, all right, that's plastic. These actual outdoor doors, pull that latch, bring about halfway down, and then let it go. Those are meant to do that. Now let's walk around to where the door is in front. This door is not meant to have that happen to you. don't wanna just get into the habit of slamming your door. Take and pull the latch, push it shut. That'll last a lot longer, trust me, because if you ain't got a door with a latch and a lock, somebody's breaking in and they're gonna take your stuff. Don't slam your doors. Like I said, only doors that are meant to close that way are these outside storage bins. So the latch. If you don't feel comfortable doing that, you can pull them down and then just kind of shove them shut. Careful, because everything is plastic on these things. 
All right, so we're gonna take just a second here. We're at the tires and the rims and stuff. Big thing, now if you're parked up in a park or something like that and you plan on staying there for a long time, it's not as much important. But if you're a traveler and you're going to be on the road, these tires need to be up to date. For instance, I told you this was a 2012 Dutchman Kodiak. On your tire, usually there's a code somewhere that says 3211. That code right there is telling me that these tires were made in 2011. So before I get my butt and my hiney down the road with these wheels and traveling any distance, I need to update these tires because I don't want to be loaded down heading to Colorado or somewhere and have a blowout on the side of the road. Keep up to date on your tires. Big thing. Now some of these things I'm sharing with you might be like, well, eh, eh, whatever. Trust me, in time, everybody's gonna have to face these. One thing I did when I got this RV uh, is I went through every single one of the screws every one of the screws because on these babies here they come with a little square head and they start rotting out i took them all out every single one of them and i replaced them with stainless steel phillips head screws so that way i don't have to have a special tool to take those on and off and they're not going to rot and i live down here in florida where everything rots okay so we're inside it's a little bit dark in here right now at this point uh my rv is currently in storage i plan on going full time in it someday um but as everybody knows, even depending on the size of RV or travel trailer you're in, 24 foot here, you can't ever get enough counter space. Well, I have a little bit of a solution for that, something, that, a product that you can order. See your stove here? This can act as a counter space. Check it out. This is a product made by Cameco. This is a cutting board. It's like an extra shelf. See that? It comes with little feet that sit on the bottom. Um, and there's pre-drilled holes I haven't gotten around to doing them they kind of look like this and they got little grooves in there all right so that this thing also on the bottom is a non-skid pad set this thing right over top of my stove do not turn the stove on it'll burn it now I have a complete other area and I'm not boogering up all my counter space that's brilliant that's innovative and it's easy to stow away somewhere if you're having to have the use of the, the oven for something but right now i can serve my meal on here instead of having to throw it all over there on the table all over the countertop and stuff like that brilliant thinking now we all know that space is absolutely premium when it comes to being an rv especially if you're going to live in an rv every inch of this apparatus and where you're living in or staying in is absolutely important to make every inch count in this case if we're staying somewhere we don't want to burn up all our propane uh, using the stove every time that we want to cook something or maybe it's raining out and you can't grill and you're tired to take out and stuff a simple little burner now this isn't for boondocking because this is rated at 13 amps and your RV is usually rated for 12 amps. If you're hooked up at a park and you have shore power and stuff like that, nobody's lighting up any burners on the stove. It's raining outside, we can't grill. You might have an Instapot, you might have a uh, uh, air fryer or something like that. But say you just wanna heat up a little bit of noodles and eat some ramen, right here. Very, very smart, innovative thinking. Single burner, $12 at Walmart. Get yourself one. You'll thank me. Well, like I said, I live here in Central Florida where it's hot most of the year. Let's just say and play out the scenario that I live full time in my RV. The air conditioner is just going to be cranking and cranking and cranking. A couple little tip ideas that I've done to try to improve my RV is I got blackout curtains. See this? And over here by where the bedroom is, blackout curtains. All right, pull the regular blinds down. Now, this was a funky blind that I it was in here and it was broken. So I went to my big box store. I bought a stringless unit. And then I hung <clears throat> myself some curtains, some blackout curtains. That way we can keep this thing nice and cool. Also, you can find these online or sometimes in an RV dealership. A little pillow that is special just for your vent. See that? That blocks out the sun. Not to mention, if you're trying to sleep in, God knows you want to have none of that light coming in and waking up. Thus is another reason why I put a little deal here, if you can see, it's a curtain where I can pull these curtains closed and I can black out my entire bedroom area. So it can be 11, 12 o'clock in the morning and I'm still sleeping in pitch dark. That's thinking. All right, so we all know that the inside of a coach, an RV or a travel trailer, everything is made out of wood. All right, so it's very thin wood. 
but one of the biggest things is a lot of people, especially when the weather gets a little bit cooler and stuff, they like opening up their windows or their vents and stuff like that and just airing out their RV. What happens with that? Now you start getting those precious little pieces of wood and stuff that are inside your RV and you start getting damp and you start getting mold and stuff. Here's a solution that I came up with. There's two different things and we're going to walk into the bathroom. It's a little bit dark. Get yourself some simple damp rid. Set that thing where you know most of the moisture is going to be, especially when you have a shower and you got the steam and stuff like that. Before you know it, this thing is going to be so humid inside here. And I understand the air conditioners are meant to filter that out, but not all of it. And if you don't want to do that, I picked myself up a $30 miniature dehumidifier off of Amazon. And this thing will pull moisture out as much as it gets put back in there. This is a smart, innovative way of doing things to keep the moisture out, the mold down, the smell, the humidity, all that good stuff. But if you're not in the market for something like that, this is a great investment if you're doing full time. Pick some damp bread up and you'll thank me. All right, I've got tips and tricks all day long. I'm gonna share one more with you. I'll have a follow-up video with a lot more neat and innovative ideas. Last thing I'm gonna show you is by all means, if you're gonna be hooking up to an RV park and you're gonna be hooking the water and all that stuff up, Spend the money and get yourself a pressure regulator. So when you get your fresh water connection, which is right here, somewhere in line before that water enters your RV, <clears throat> you want your regulator. Why? Because inside of here, the plumbing is pecked with pipe. <clears throat> what if there's a surge in water pressure and you get a blowout? With this little baby right here, which is right about $5, a little pressure regulator, it ensures that the pressure of the water coming into your RV is between 40 and 50 pounds, which is plenty of pressure for these types of applications and such. And um, if you don't, you're gonna be sorry. So that's all I have for the tips this week. I'm glad you guys all hung out and listened. Got any questions, leave them down below. Appreciate it, until next time, I'll see you on the next adventure. Take care.